The way your motorcycle mixes fuel and air could be the reason your bike runs like a dream or constantly lets you down. And here's the kicker. The difference between the two main systems is way bigger than you probably expect. We're talking about carburetors versus fuel injection, old school versus modern tech. But before you pick a side, don't skip. Because in the next three minutes, you're going to learn stuff that might completely flip your opinion, even if you thought you already knew which one's better. There's more going on behind these systems than most people realize, and by the end of this video, you'll understand why this debate isn't as simple as it seems. What does carburetor and EFI do? At the core, both are like the chefs of your motorcycle's engine, tasked with cooking up the perfect air-fuel mix for every ride. Same job title, wildly different personalities. The carburetor is an old-school cook who eyeballs everything, doesn't follow recipes, but still somehow pulls it off, most of the time. Fuel injection is your high-tech sous chef with digital thermometers, precise timers, and a robot assistant. Both are feeding your engine, but while the carburetor responds to airflow changes and relies on good old vacuum and physics, EFI commands a fleet of sensors, fuel pumps, and computer chips to get things just right. They're chasing the same goal, optimal combustion, but the routes they take feel like a dirt road versus a GPS-guided highway. The real twist? One of them doesn't care about altitude, weather, or whether you skipped breakfast. The other? Let's just say it's a bit moody, but to really understand why riders argue over which is better, we need to start where it all began, with the carburetor. And trust me, it's both simpler and sneakier than it looks. At first glance, it looks like a maze of metal tubes and screws. But deep down, it's a vacuum-powered genius. As your engine's piston moves down, it pulls in air through the carburetor. That speeding air hits a narrow section, called a venturi, which causes the pressure to drop. Nature doesn't like pressure imbalances, so it responds by sucking fuel up from the float bowl and spraying it into the airflow. No sensors, no electronics, just good old physics. If you need more power, open the throttle, more air rushes in, and more fuel gets pulled in too. It's reactive, mechanical, and oddly brilliant. Some carburetors even use multiple barrels, like a second stage kicking in when you're gunning it, giving better performance across different RPMs. But while it works, it doesn't adapt. A carburetor doesn't know if you're riding up a mountain or starting the bike in freezing cold. It'll just keep doing its thing, even if it's the wrong thing for the moment. So while it may feel like riding with a loyal old friend, the real question is, can loyalty keep up with modern demands? Now let's discuss the fuel-injected engine. Instead of relying on airflow and pressure changes, fuel injection uses precision engineering and real-time data. Here's the magic. Sensors constantly measure things like throttle position, engine temperature, air pressure, and even the oxygen in your exhaust. All that info goes to the ECU, basically the engine's brain, which calculates exactly how much fuel is needed and when to spray it. The fuel injector then delivers a fine mist directly into the intake port, or even right into the cylinder, depending on the system. It results in smoother starts, better throttle response, more power when you need it, and superior fuel economy. You don't need to mess with a choke on cold mornings, riding at sea level, or climbing to 10,000 feet. It doesn't care. EFI adjusts itself on the fly. It's fast, efficient, and incredibly clean. So clean, in fact, that it's the reason most modern bikes can meet today's strict emissions laws. But there's a trade-off. If something fails, like the fuel pump or a throttle sensor, there's no roadside fix with a wrench and a swear word. But what if I told you, some modern engines don't choose between the two. They use both systems at the same time. Let's understand it as well. Dual injection systems. So, what happens when engineers stop choosing sides and say, why not both? That's exactly what dual injection systems do. These smart setups combine port injection and direct injection in a single engine. At low speeds or light throttle, the engine uses port injection, giving the fuel time to mix with air and even helping clean the intake valves. But when you crank the throttle or demand full power, direct injection kicks in, spraying fuel right into the combustion chamber for cooler, more powerful, and more efficient combustion. 
This combo lets the engine be smooth, clean, and efficient in city riding, and aggressive, cool running, and high performing when you're pushing it. But fuel delivery is only half the story. The real battle lies in how these systems evolved, and why one is being pushed out by forces far beyond performance. So, let's discuss emissions and evolution. It's not just performance that shaped the future of fuel systems, it's emissions. While carburetors had their time in the spotlight, they were never built with clean air in mind. They constantly vent fuel vapors, struggle with precise tuning, and can adjust to real-time environmental changes. In today's world of strict regulations and eco-conscious design, that's a deal-breaker. Fuel injection, on the other hand, plays by the modern rulebook. It delivers exact air-fuel ratios, reduces unburned hydrocarbons, and optimizes combustion in every cylinder. That means fewer tailpipe emissions, better fuel economy, and engines that actually meet global standards. And governments? They've noticed. That's why over the years, carburetors began disappearing. Not because they failed, but because the world around them changed. But if EFI is so efficient and clean, why do some riders still swear by carburetors? There's more to this than emissions in tech. Why do some bikes still use carbs? Some smaller bikes, scooters, and off-road machines still use carbs because they're cheap, proven, and easy to fix. In parts of the world where access to diagnostic tools or replacement sensors is limited, a carburetor's simplicity is a huge advantage. And for garage tinkerers and DIY lovers, carburetors are a dream. No laptops, no codes, just screwdrivers and tuning by feel. They're also perfect for bikes that don't need high-tech wizardry, machines that prioritize simplicity, cost, and rugged reliability over cutting-edge performance. But now the big question. Whether you're chasing speed, reliability, or ease of maintenance, which one actually fits your riding style best? And which one should you choose? The answer isn't one size fits all. If you ride in remote areas, love working on your bike, or want something that's low cost and easy to fix with a basic toolkit, a carbureted engine might be your perfect match. It's raw, mechanical, and gives you total control if you're willing to get your hands dirty. But if you want reliability, better fuel efficiency, cleaner emissions, and an engine that adapts to your riding conditions with zero effort, then fuel injection is the clear winner. It just works, no matter the altitude, temperature, or throttle input. In the end, it's not about old versus new. It's about what kind of rider you are. Some value simplicity, others want performance and precision. The best fuel system is the one that keeps you on the road, in your rhythm, and loving every second of the ride. If you found this helpful, give it a like, share it with a fellow rider, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Got thoughts or a favorite between carbs and EFI? Drop it in the comments, I'd love to hear your take.